Toxic Relationships. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. I'm glad you're here. In this episode, we're going to be discussing the differences between pathological and natural lying. And that may be a distinction you don't know much about, but you will learn. And what do we do with all of this lying that happens when we're in relationships with the relentlessly difficult people I call hijackles? So we're going to explore that deeply. I hope you'll stay tuned and listen to the end. There's so much here for you. And I am always delighted when you are here listening and learning. It'll change your life. Having these insights about what's up with these difficult people makes it so that you can make better decisions. Once you can see something, you can change something. Once you can see something, you can say something. And you have to know whether it's wise to say something, and if you are going to say it, how to say it. So let's get on with this topic about dealing with pathological lies and the natural liars so important. If you've been following me for a while, I'm so glad. If you're brand new, I'm glad you found me. If you'd like to be part of my newsletter so that you know what's going on at any given time, you can always do that by going to hijackalhelp.com. 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 So lying. We hate it when we're lied to. I'm not talking about the little white lies, you know, do I look fat in this? <laughs> not those ones. I mean, the actual lies about events, situations, feelings, things that, that become a little chronic and they become troublesome. And you begin to wonder, can I believe anything this person says to me? And that's what happens with hijackles, isn't it? You begin to wonder, can I believe anything at all? So why do they lie? Well, they lie because they can have dominance over you. And that's something they always want. I'm sure you've noticed that. So that they can always be in the driver's seat. They can always be the one bringing the information and making it real, whether it's true or it's not true. They also lie because they want to win in the moment. And if they can't win with facts, they'll win with emotional facts, ones that they made up, or actual facts that they made up. So that necessity to win, that desire to win, that deep need to win and not ever be wrong, that will certainly cause them to lie. They also want to be the expert. Have you noticed that? They want to be the expert on anything. They want to have the definitive word. They want to be the one who knows, the one who has, brings the information. You know, I, I met a, a fellow a long time ago, and I thought it's really strange that he has the radio on all the time, all the time. And he was giving me some pretty big red flag vibes anyway, but this radio on all the time, all the time. And then I noticed this, that if I spoke to him and I said, oh, did you hear that such and such happened? I heard it on the news. If he hadn't heard it first, he was furious. So we know things about hijackals, and he would lie about things. Now, I didn't stay there very long. I certainly saw those red flags. But had I been younger, I wouldn't have seen them. If I hadn't recognized all the work that I do, I might not have seen them earlier. But the, the red flags are there, and we really have to recognize them, even if we don't want to because we really like the person or we want the attention or we've been lonely for a while. But please, please recognize the red flags. So why else do they lie? They want to one-up you. They want to always be the one who knows, like that fellow. If I said, did you hear this? Yes, I heard it an hour ago. He always wanted to one-up, whether or not he'd heard it an hour ago didn't matter. But it was that one-upmanship or one-up womanship, if such a word exists. And the other thing is that the flip side is also true. They lie because they want to make you wrong. 
And they lie because they want to make you smaller or minimize you and make themselves bigger. Hijackals always want to be bigger than any room, any other person, any other facts. So lying then becomes a prerequisite. That's what they do. And they also do another thing with their lying. They are very crafty with this. They want to introduce misinformation. They want to introduce misinformation. And let's look at those hijackals for a bit. They lie for all these reasons, and they honestly think, and we've seen it work, that if they lie and tell that same lie over and over and over, you will start to think about it as the truth. Now, we've seen that many times. And have you seen it in your own life? That the hijackal says, this was the way it was. They were actually gaslighting you as they're lying. They tell you, this is the way it was. This is what you did. And you get a little confused and you start saying, well, did I? I don't remember doing that, but maybe I did. And they tell the story so frequently that now you believe that you did what they said you did, even though you started out knowing that you didn't. So the introduction of misinformation and then repeating that and repeating it and repeating it is intended to get you to believe it, even though it never happened or it didn't happen the way that they're suggesting that it did. So how many times do they introduce misinformation? Now, this may sound harsh to you, but was it misinformation when they said, I love you? Was it misinformation when they said you're worthless? Was it misinformation when they told you you were incapable or made you feel insignificant? See, it all gets really fuzzy and muddy, doesn't it? Because after a while, you recognize that if they're lying, about some things, they may be lying about everything. And you don't want to see that because you want to believe that you can trust them. And particularly, you want to believe you could trust them because in the beginning, they told you that they loved you. And they said all those things during the love bombing phase. And you really, really want that to be true. So that's why you go back to say, but I know that they love me. Well, really, has their behavior shown that recently? And now they're lying to you. Is that what somebody who loves you does? They lie to you? Or do they, do they actually repeat things like, you're, I, you're, you're, I don't know why I bother with you. You're nothing to me. Or I absolutely need you. Haven't you had that shift in them often enough? That when they need you, you're wonderful. When they don't need you, you're terrible. When they want you to do something, they love you. When you, you don't do what they want you to do, they hate you. Now, what's the truth here? Remember, they're going to lie. So you really have to think about this. Really think about it deeply. Don't believe the pieces that you want to believe. Question all of them. Because if you start to believe their misinformation, you can go down a very, very deep rabbit hole. And you can start believing it yourself. And that's what I help my clients with. You're figuring that all out. And if I can help you or you want my help, go over to emergingempowered.com. There's pages and pages of information there for you. Tests you can take, free checklists, blogs, videos, all those things at emergingempowered.com. And if you want my help and are ready to be a part of my Emerging Empowered community, it's really simple. Just go to joinintoday.com. Joinintoday.com. When you're a member of my Emerging Empowered community, you get three opportunities a month to be on group calls with me. And that's a wonderful thing. So go to joinintoday.com. And particularly if it's hitting home in this episode that you are being lied to and maybe you want to figure out, am I being lied to all the time or some of the time? Or when 
can I determine whether I'm being lied to or I'm not? And am I deciding I'm not being lied to at the times that I hear what I want to hear? And could that be a lie? Yeah, it really gets difficult. So did you start to believe their lies? Which ones? The convenient ones or all of them? Be careful with that. And did other people start believing their lies and become their flying monkeys? Loyal to the hijackal, even though it's hurting you. But think about this. Even in the beginning, the lie may have been, I love you, and you still want to believe it. And you'll remember our mantra, ABB, always believe behavior. So is the behavior that you're seeing consistently, I love you behavior? If not, you have to question that, don't you? Because it was a lie. Yes, it seems that way, that they loved you. You want to believe that they did. But if a person loves you, they don't go hot and cold all the time. I love you, I hate you, I, I love you, I can't stand you, I love you, you're worthless. No, you have to start asking yourself, is the lie really, I love you? So they lie to make themselves the center of attention. Haven't you ever been out with a hijackal and they, they need something a little bit bigger than the story someone else has told, or they need something to be a little sensational? So they elaborate, they embellish, they change. Well, come on, they lie. And you're supposed to go along with it. You're supposed to agree. You're supposed to nod. Mm -hmm. For a hijackals, they love to take the glory or they don't mind being the victim as long as they are the center of attention. All eyes on them, all feelings coming their way. And they love to manipulate those feelings. And some people will play the victim sometimes and will be the center of attention hero others. Some people always play the victim. Um, they're, they're always, oh, poor me. And it was, nobody ever cares about me. I've always been insignificant. I've always been a support player. Never, never, ever had the center of attention. Nobody ever notices me. I mean, I'm invisible. Sometimes I feel I'm invisible, but it's all right. You know, that's the, that's the covert hijackal. And then we have the overt hijackal, which it should be all about me because I'm fabulous, I'm wonderful, and people are clamoring to be with me. So you should see yourself as absolutely blessed because I'm with you. But it's all attention-seeking behavior. And <clears throat> have you noticed their lies? They shift, they morph, they change, maybe by 10 degrees or 10% or maybe by 180 degrees or 100%, depending on the audience, depending on how they're feeling, depending on how much attention they're getting at the time. Now, these are well beyond the lies of, yes, I did what you asked me to do, <laughs> which they probably didn't, and you'll find that out later. But I'm talking about very basic lies, about who we are and how we are in relationship together. So I promised that I would tell you a few things about the difference between natural liars and pathological liars. And if any of this sounds familiar to you and you want to talk with me about it, I do have a one-time full one-hour introductory session for new clients for only $97. And you can take advantage of that by going to beaclient.com. Beaclient.com. And I'd love to talk to you. And you will learn more about that there. So natural liars. Now, it's not that people are born naturally lying. Those are pathological liars. But there are people who don't have any problem lying. It kind of comes naturally to them. They can fit it into the conversation. They can mm, just meld it into a sentence and nothing happens. Their face doesn't change. There's nothing that you kind of get a clue about because they lie easily and they lie successfully. They know their ability to lie. And so do the people around them who've hung out with them for a while. They're quite comfortable with their ability to lie. And they know they can pull it off. But 
they lie to get away with things. They're not, as you will see, like pathological liars. These people lie because they've got to, they've got to find a way around something. <laughs> so they lie to get away with things. And they don't have what we call detention apprehension, detection apprehension, I mean. Detection apprehension shows on your face. I'm afraid you're not buying it. D do you know I'm lying? You know, that's where you get the ideas of the shifty eyes and all. You know, I, you know, that, that my dog ate the homework, <laughs> that kind of thing where we have detection apprehension. But natural liars don't have that. They're not afraid of being detected because they lie so easily and effortlessly and their faces don't give them away. Now, a big thing about natural liars that makes them different than pathological liars is that they have a conscience. They know they're lying and they will, they will change if, if they have the experience of being caught. They don't want to be caught. Pathological liars don't care, but natural liars care. They have a conscience and they have empathy. They're concerned about other people. They're concerned about how their lies affect other people. And when you tell them that, it gets in. Natural liars care and they learn from their experiences. There's nothing antisocial in the makeup of a natural liar. They're just kind of lying to get along or lying to avoid, lying to not take responsibility for something, um, lying to look a little better, <laughs> like I didn't do my homework, but the dog ate it. Um, but they never, natural liars, never lie to harm other people. That's not what they're doing it for. Pathological liars, especially those with psychopathic tendencies, they lie to harm other people and they take great pleasure in doing so. So do you know a natural liar? Are you one? Can you just put something into the conversation that is not true, but you never give it away with your face and everybody buys it? And so you don't feel badly about doing it because it didn't hurt anybody? Some people can't lie at all. They can't. And that can be wonderful if you want somebody who's direct and who will always tell you the truth. That's a good thing. But then there are natural liars who will just weave it into the conversation and you'll be none the wiser. But if you do ask a question of a natural liar and say, I don't think so. That's not the way it happened. Are you sure? I remember it differently. They get concerned because they have a conscience and they may get that silly green. Well, you know, it was a little different than that. And that's the way that natural liars function. Um, but pathological or psychopathic liars are very, very different because they have that superficial charm you know they're they're there to disarm you and you are flattered by it until you actually see it and then it kind of gags you a bit doesn't it you you feel it coming you hear it coming you see it coming you know oh yeah here comes a whopper and you know what's going to happen but they have this charm and you want to believe it you do because you they always say the things you most want to hear. So don't beat yourself up for, for that. But just know that as you get wiser and you get more realistic and honest with yourself about what's really going on in that hijackal head, then we have to realize that that charm, mm -mm, that's the tell. That says, oh, the whopper's coming. Uh, they're leading up to something and it's not going to be something good. <clears throat> but these are the pathological or psychopathic liars. And they're totally devoid of empathy, totally empathy deficient. So they don't care if they hurt you. They don't care if they lie about you. They don't care if they lasso you into their lie and hope that you will go along with them or that you will get caught along with them if they lie and include you. They really don't care. And if they do get caught, they have no remorse because they're not working with a conscience. <laughs> they don't care. 
It's just whatever, whatever I need to say to get what I want, whatever I need to say to get attention, whatever I need to say to hold the attention, whatever I need to say to get ahead, they don't care. They'll lie on a resume. They lie on, um, on their mother's graves. And there will be nothing in their face that will give them away. Contrary to the popular belief that there is. Yes, of course there are. There are micro-expressions that give away lies. But to the untrained eye, they get away with a lot. And sometimes it takes a while for you to cotton on. Like... I heard that story a little bit differently last week. What's going on? What's really happening here? And then you stand back and you realize, hmm, who was the audience? What did they need from them? What were they telling? Why were they telling it? Why did it need to change? And you start realizing these lies. And you start, hopefully, saying, that's not okay with me. You know, I used to let those things go. Not that you're going to do a big confrontation about them because we're going to tell you about that in a little while but <clears throat> just watch them listen for them observe 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 and then you'll realize by standing back and observing this happens a lot they don't have any guilt they get caught in a lie they'll lie to say that they 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 didn't do it right even when they're caught they will come back with two or three attempts to say something different. They don't have any guilt. They don't have any shame. They're not embarrassed by being caught in a lie. They just want to make you look foolish. They don't care. They really don't care. Have you had that experience with somebody who truly doesn't care that they're lying to you? It's a horrible feeling. Because they're not going to change. And that's the important thing to notice. You know, people who are pathological liars will always be pathological liars. They have no motivation to change. And you are not motivation enough. They will not change. Because they're not afraid of being caught. And they lie for no reason. It's just who they are. If it seems good to say this today, I'll say this. If it seems good to say the opposite tomorrow, I'll say the opposite. I don't need to have a reason. I don't need to be afraid. I don't need to get away with anything. I don't need to make an excuse. I don't need to shift blame. I don't have to do anything. If I'm a pathological liar, I lie because I lie. I don't need a reason. And I lie compulsively, meaning I can't stop myself. I just do it. What I, who I am and what I do. It is all lying, no matter which way we look at that. It is all lying. And I've noticed, you know, with talking with clients or talking with friends or noticing about myself and all, that when you start to recognize that people lie, and you start to recognize that you have been covering for them or accepting it or excusing it or justifying it or rationalizing it, then you've become complicit with the lying. And so your first work is within yourself to say, oh, I'm going to take a step back here and see where, where the lies are and if there's any truth to what's being said. Don't take any action against the liar. But observe and ask yourself, okay, which parts of this are true? Which parts of this are not true? How often does this happen? How many times do I buy it? Have I bought it in the past? Have I given them the impression that I buy their lies? These are important questions. Because their self-interest, hijackal self-interest, fuels their dishonesty. They always want to be the one who is known and right and attention-seeking. They always want to be at the center of things. They always want to be the director of everything, including your thoughts. And so their self-interest fuels their, their 
dishonesty, to get what they want, to have life be the way they want it to be. They are dishonest. And your first question is, do I recognize the dishonesty? Even if I have to recognize the dishonesty that they don't really love me. Because if they did, they would treat me differently. They would speak to me differently. And maybe I've been rationalizing and justifying their bad behavior because I really want to believe they love me. And sadly, that's whether it's your parents that you're thinking of right this second, or a partner, or a sibling, or a friend. You may want to believe it. But when you look at their behavior, you know their behavior is a lie. And so many of the things that they say and do are a lie. Not to mention all that they will say in court, which will be a lie. All they will put in their briefings, all they will ask for and have reason for why they should have full custody of the children. So many lies. So right this moment is really important for you to take a step back and say, is there any truth here? And can I put my finger on where the truth is as opposed to finding the many, many lies? So a few things to do after taking that step back. Stay calm. There's no point getting upset about the fact that they're lying because you buy into them and give their lie power. So just stay calm and observe it. Oh, they're lying again. I can't believe that. Their behavior doesn't make that true. And expect them to deny. So if you say, you know, that's not the way I remember it, which is absolutely a perfect personal weather report response, which I encourage you to use, that's not the way I remember it, that's not the way I felt, because gaslighting and lying can get awfully muddy too. They're trying to lie to you to build a narrative that they wish they had created. And they're trying to take away your experience of it as real and replace it with the misinformation of the lie. So all that becomes very convoluted. So if you say, that's not the way I remember it, a perfect personal weather report, they will say, well, you just have a bad memory. It's got to come back and blame shift, right? So expect denial. They're not going to admit to lying. Now, sometimes they will if you push and push and push, and they're a natural liar, not a pathological liar, because they have a conscience. But the first pass, probably not going to admit it. So expect denial. And then remember, their lying is all about them. It's not about you. Even if their lies seem to be about you, their lying is not. And that's a big distinction to make. They are lying. It has nothing to do with you. So it becomes important to recognize that a lot of what comes from a hijackle's mouth is inaccurate. And when you can start making a distinction between what's accurate and what's not, then you begin to see how big the pile of lies grows. Now, when someone is lying to you and you say, that's not the way I remember it, I re mean, you may say, I remember this. And of course, when you give a personal weather report, you never mention another human by name or pronoun. So you're only speaking about yourself. I remember it this way. I felt this way. I saw this. And that may jog their memory because they realize it's a natural lie and they are realizing that they have been caught, they may care. But if they are compulsive liars, pathological liars, they don't care and they are not going to change. So remember, those lies, whether they're natural liars or, or pathological liars, are about them. That's the way they do business in life. That's the way they run their, they run their numbers, if you like. It's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. Staying, listening to the lies, believing the lies has something to do with you, but their lying has nothing to do with you. And it's important to remember that. And it's important to know that you can end the conversation when the lies begin. 
You can walk away, have to go to the restroom, have to leave, have to do something, and say, oh, that's interesting, and walk away. Because confronting liars is really treacherous in many cases, particularly pathological liars, because they'll just keep upping the ante and lie more. So it becomes extremely difficult. And I wanted to make this distinction for you in this episode between natural and pathological liars and to use that as a way to talk about hijackals and realize that there are decisions to be made when you start to realize that you have been with a person who has told so many lies that now you cannot believe anything. You know, there are, there are things in the court, in the whole court system that say when when a person shows that they lied about something and you can establish it with evidence, then you have to ask the question, are they lying about everything? And so it is with hijackals. When you understand that they are lying, you have to ask, are they lying about everything, even the good stuff? And I know you don't want to think that. I know you don't want to feel that. I know you want to cling to the, oh, but they love me, but they want me, but they like me. You know, I know that. But that big moment of clarity comes when you realize that if they lie, they could also be lying about the good things. And it could all be designed to just manipulate you to get what you, they what you want they want from you so the next thing you have to do after this observation and being calm and expecting the denial is to make relationship decisions is this okay with you is it all right to be in a relationship with someone who is always lying or that you can never predict if they will tell the truth because that will change your very nature of understanding whether or not you are in the right place. And if you need help with that, get help with that. Because it's hard to believe that somebody isn't demonstrating that they love you. That they're just not doing that. They're not doing that. And you know that, as I said, if you need want to talk to me, there are two ways. You can go to beaclient.com and use my one-time new client opportunity, or you can come and join the Emerging Empowered Community at joinintoday.com. And if you forget these link names, you can just go to emergingempowered.com and search around in the navigation, and you will find everything. And remember, too, that if you'd like to get my newsletter every week so you know what's new and what's up and what videos there are and where the po what the podcasts were and all those things, just go to hijackalhelp.com and sign up. And then you'll get that every Thursday. And occasionally when something new comes out, you may get an extra one. So which lies can you abide? Which lies are which lies? You know, I love you, I hate you, I need you, I want you, I can't stand you, I never loved you, I always loved you. Where are the lies? Don't be afraid of finding them. You don't want to be hoodwinked by a lie any longer. You may not want that evidence. You may not even want to know that the answer is it was a lie. But it's your life. It's your life going by. And if you have children, it's what the children are observing and thinking is okay. So it becomes so important. When you're with a deceiver, you know you can't trust them. You can't trust them. You want to, but you can't. And believe the evidence that you can't. And one phenomenon that happens is they're, they're saying things and you don't believe it at first. You're really resistant to it. And this is a big deal. No, that's not the truth. No, you don't think that. No, I don't believe you. But after they've said it over and over, giving you that misinformation, you begin to believe it. And you know why? Because there's a high cost to uncovering the deceit. And you don't want to pay it. You don't want to get into the fight. You don't want to have to... Uh, change the relationship. You don't want to call them out. It, the cost of uncovering deceit is too high. So you keep believing the lies. 
And that's where many people come to me and they've been with a person for years and years and years and years. And they say, why did I do it so long? Because you desperately wanted to believe the lies. And it's very circular. You know, you know what's wrong, but you want it to be right. So you start thinking, well, maybe it's so. And so you wait another year or you wait another six months and it keeps happening. Get the skills to be emerging empowered. Get those skills. You don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to make a big decision, but baby steps and nanoseconds. You know, when you go to joinintoday.com and become part of my emerging empowered community, there are so many things that you get as a member coming to you month after month. And a new thing that's just rolling out now are my journals. Journals on different aspects of this. Is it emotional abuse? Should I stay or should I go? Each one is a journal that you can fill in online. And I ask you all the questions and then you can fill them in and you can see what's inside you and do it at your leisure. Do it in secret if you must. But it helps you figure all that out. And those are member perks of being part of the Emerging Empowered community. So when you find yourself in that, I don't want to confront the lie, but I know I'm being lied to, and you become somewhat immobilized, I hope that hearing these things tonight has helped you say, I don't think I want to live in the lie any longer. I need to find out what I need to do within myself, and then I need to find out what to do with the other person. And I'm here to help you, so go to beaclient.com. I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's caused you to think about a few things a little bit differently. And until we speak again, take very good care of yourself because you're precious and you matter. Talk soon. Good evening. How are you? Look at all the folks. Great. That's always exciting to know that you've been listening in. And let's see what's said here. Deborah B. says, So sad that the I love you lie, which is never backed up with many meaningful actions, can make you question your worthiness for love. Yeah, it is sad, Deborah. It is so sad. And I feel badly even bringing it up because, you know, we all want to be loved. We all want to believe it. So we do take those little breadcrumbs of love and think they're a full meal, and they're not. But the hijackal knows that we'll jump at those tiny breadcrumbs. So that gets very enmeshed. And I've done other podcasts about the breadcrumbs and things. So I won't speak much about that, but it is sad. I said, it says, thanks always. Well, you're always welcome. <laughs> Deborah said, oh, thank you, Deborah. Deborah made a donation. <laughs> thank you. And an emoji. Deborah says, not wasting any more time with all the lies. The high cost was losing the relationship, but it's a price worth paying for having an authentic life. Oh, you're absolutely right. That is the case. I believe that fully. Now, that's all the comments that there are tonight. That's very unusual. I wonder if something happened to the system or if you just became um, listening very carefully to the information. Um, know that I wait until there haven't been any more comments for 30 seconds, and then I believe that we're done for the night. So if you have a question or if you have something you'd like to say, put it in the chat. And it seems here that the last thing that was offered was at 7.36, which would make it probable that that was all there was. And I don't see anything else coming in. So I have to believe that your questions are all answered and the things that you need to go away and think about and maybe cry about a little bit um, are next on your agenda. Yes, so you know where to find me. You can definitely find everything at emergingempowered.com. So until we speak again, take very good care of yourself because you're precious and you matter, and Linda just got in under the wire. 
She says, I know who I was and who I am. I'm a daughter of a hijackal, and this is bothering me. Well, Linda, it's great that you see it. I know it's unpleasant. I know it bothers you. I know it maybe hurts your heart. But once you see it, you are going to protect yourself. You are going to be honest with yourself. And you're going to have, you know, the pain of releasing people who will never have the ability or willingness to love you. It's so very important. But that's part of taking very good care of yourself is to realize that there are people who don't have love to give. They may have the words, but they don't have the ability. So take very good care of yourself, and I will talk to you all again soon. Be sure to subscribe on Facebook or YouTube so you will get the notice of the topic sometime on Monday afternoons, and invite your friends if you're finding value here. Take care and talk soon.